Recently, we witnessed one disgruntled player in Jeff Petrie finally getting put out of his misery due to being dealt to Pittsburgh. Therefore, I decided it would only be fitting to take a look at the players that still remain on teams that they reportedly don't want to be on. In this video, we're going to take a look at four NHL players that have shown signs of wanting out and to move on from their current organizations. And with that, here are four players that probably wish they were on new teams and where they could end up. Ever since the Dallas Stars made the Stanley Cup Finals in 2020, the team hasn't even come close to being what it was two years ago. Sure, there have been a few bright spots on the team that give way for an undercurrent of optimism, but even still, things are pretty uncertain in Dallas. One of the biggest question marks this offseason is, and has been, the future of defenseman John Klingberg. Midway through last season, reports began to surface that Klingberg felt unappreciated and frustrated with how his contract negotiations had been going with the team. However, now that we're well into the offseason, and free agency for that matter, it's becoming more clear with each passing day that Klingberg will probably be departing for good from Dallas here shortly. Klingberg, who had a productive season last campaign, was able to record an impressive 47 points in 74 games played with Dallas. In mobile, puck-moving defenseman, he would be able to give any prospective team an offensive jolt from the back end. Since there isn't much left on the market regarding D-men at this point, if he's patient, Klingberg just might be able to cash in and take advantage. However, there's a team that's recently become connected to Klingberg that might not be interested in investing long term. Previously, we've talked about Seattle and Carolina being potential fits for the blue liner, but today we're going to entertain a new possibility, the Detroit Red Wings. Recently, on Elliot Friedman's 32 Thoughts podcast, Jeff Merrick indicated that he believed that the Motor City would be the top destination for Klingberg in the end. Merrick, in summary, reasoned that even though Carolina would have offered him more term prior to trading for Burns, Detroit could still be an attractive avenue for Klingberg to explore. GM Steve Eiserman would be offering less term, most likely, but Klingberg could be the answer for the Wings, who could benefit from more offense from the back end. Concerning Vladimir Tarasenko, his experience with the St. Louis Blues for years now haven't been the greatest. Even though his injuries, surgeries, and overall dealings with the medical team have been the go-to topic, I decided to backtrack to before his trade request was formally submitted. Ryan O'Reilly is given the honor of becoming the next captain of the team. However, something happened that rarely does, really, in hockey culture. After the C was sewn onto O'Reilly's jersey, Tarasenko wasn't shy about his feelings surrounding the decision. And according to an article we're referencing via translation, Tarasenko gave some reasoning behind his disappointment. Of course, when you play for eight years at a club and have been an assistant for a long time, Jaden Schwartz and I have been playing the longest at St. Louis of the guys on the team now, he says. Therefore, this set the stage for even more drama and resentment from Tarasenko to come about towards his longtime team. And after struggling to receive adequate treatment for his shoulder, Tarasenko last offseason made his desire public of wanting to leave St. Louis. While sometimes cases such as these do change course, such as Jake DeBrusque's for example, Tarasenko still seems to be set on departing from the show-me state as soon as possible. But there's no doubt that there is interest on the market regarding the forward services. Tarasenko has long been connected to the New York Islanders, who are due to make a big splash or two this offseason. With 82 points and 75 games played last campaign, there's little doubt that Tarasenko wouldn't be able to help Matt Barzell remedy the issue of low scoring up front. One of, if not the player that's been making the most noise in the media lately is Pierre-Luc Dubois. For the Winnipeg Jets, the franchise has seen more than its fair share of star talent depart from Manitoba over the years. And Dubois, who was the return piece in the Patrick Laine trade, seems like the next player to be added to the lengthy list of players that won out of Winnipeg. Thinking back to his last days as a jacket, Dubois, at least in my opinion anyways, made it clear that he was in it for himself. Basically, to manipulate the situation and pretty much force a trade to happen, he gave up on ice on purpose and basically refused to play. This showed the hockey world that Dubois wasn't shy in doing what it took to get his way. 
And now, despite the damage he could be doing to his rapport with Jets fans, Dubois has repeatedly voiced his desire to play elsewhere. Interestingly, even Jack Eichel, as controversial as he was throughout his stint in Buffalo, didn't circle one team on the map and display so openly a desire to want to play there. But according to an article from The Athletic that I'll link below, multiple sources have confirmed that Dubois has done just that. The article went on to further state that Dubois even attended the draft in Montreal while expecting a trade to happen on the draft floor. Now for most of us that are familiar with hockey culture, this isn't normal behavior. Despite whatever Dubois may think though, GM Kevin Cheveldayoff isn't required to do anything. For Montreal, the dilemma will be deciding on whether or not to wait until Dubois is a UFA to pursue him or offer a package now that the Jets won't be able to refuse. Reportedly, Cole Caulfield and Nick Suzuki are both off the table as return pieces and makes a trade between the two teams less likely to happen. Recently, the Calgary Flames did something interesting that you don't hear of teams doing very often. GM Bradshaw Living and Company filed for club elected salary arbitration with star player Matthew Kachuk. Instead of the player themselves filing, which is what we normally hear about, this scenario essentially buys the Flames some more time and prevents an offer sheet from being presented in the process. And this basically ensures that if the Flames and Kachuk can't come into agreement prior to his arbitration date, he won't walk in free agency just like Johnny Goudreau did. Instead, the Flames will have the chance to trade his signing rights and at least get something out of a player they've invested so much into. If Tre Living is able to sign Kachuk, the Flames will probably be paying him around $10.5 million a season. Following his triple point campaign, in which he recorded 104 points, in 82 games played, Kachuk will be looking to build on the career year that he had last season. For now, the Flames will be holding out hope that somehow they won't have to witness two-star players exiting in back-to-back -back off seasons.